Welcome to Getting Don Technology Donations Through TechSoup. My name is Becky Wiegand, and we'll also be joined today by Thomas Netsband. We are both here in TechSoup's offices in sunny San Francisco. I'll do a brief introduction of myself and then let Tommy introduce himself. Uh, I'm an Interactive Events Producer here at TechSoup, and I have been with the organization since 2008. But prior to that had been a user of TechSoup services at three small nonprofits based in Washington, D.C., and then in Oakland, California, where I was the accidental techie frequently having to make tech de decisions, and came to TechSoup for help in the forums, to ask questions, and to request donated products. So I've been in your shoes, and hopefully today uh, I can share some of my experience in helping answer your questions about TechSoup services so you can get the most out of the donation programs as well. We'll also be joined by Tommy Nutzmand from our Client Services team who is an Account Management Specialist. And I'd like to just bring him on the line to give a little bit of introduction about himself. So welcome Tommy. Thanks Becky. Um, my name is Tom or Tommy Nutzband. I'm an Account Management Specialist here with Client Services. And um, I, before coming to TechSoup, I've been here almost three years. I work for a national nonprofit in New York City. And then um, before that, I had a career in a startup company as the COO. And I'm excited to help you guys tonight in uh, getting some product donations. So Great. Becky? Thank you, Tommy. And you'll also see on the back end Ali Bezdikian who is an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. And she will be on hand to help gather your questions, flag them for the Q&A, and just to help you with any issues throughout the webinar. So feel free to chat in anytime you feel so moved to do so, and she will be there to help you. A quick look at today's agenda. This is a light overview of the things we may cover. Um, we'll do a quick introduction of TechSoup, but then we're going to take some time to do some polls of what you most want to cover today. And so the things on the agenda after this will really depend on how you weigh in on those live polls that will start up in just a couple of minutes. And we do it this way so that we can make sure that no matter how many people register, the number of people who show up can weigh in and say, this is what's most important to us today. And so hopefully we'll get through at least two or three of those topics, maybe more, over the course of the next hour. And feel free, like I said, to ask questions whether they're related to the topics we pick or not. And then we will also have time not just throughout the webinar, but at the end for more Q&A. So diving into just a quick overview of who we are. We are a 501c3 nonprofit with a clear focus. We are working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, charity, church, foundation can get the tech products and resources they need to make the best technology decisions for their organization and to help meet your mission. We've been around since 1987 helping more than 200,000 charitable organizations in more than 60 countries around the world with right now almost $4 billion in IT expenses that we've been able to deliver to that sector. It's a little bit more about us on the screen. And we are continuing to expand what we make available to nonprofits through our generous donor partners, including new offers like consulting services, Windows 8.1, and the latest QuickBooks. So we can talk about specific products. We can talk about the donation programs in general. We can talk about how to get started and register. Those options will all be open to you when we take the poll in just a couple of minutes. If you haven't been to our website and came to us for the first time today, you can join and learn more about us overall at TechSoup.org. And we'll do some live walkthroughs to answer your questions once we get to that portion. So you'll see our website more in a moment. So let's get us on to some polls. How familiar are you with TechSoup already? And this is just to help guide me and Tommy in what we present. So feel free to click on your screen to let us know. Are you just looking for a refresher today? Do you know us quite well? Have you just learned of us today or yesterday very recently? Um, have you attended an event maybe? Have you registered but not yet gotten donations or participated? in our forums, read our blog, joined us through TechSoup for Libraries, or NetSquared, or one of our other entities like NGO Source? Do you receive newsletters but you haven't done anything else yet? And there's no shame in answering any of these. That's what this event is for. So feel free to click the ones that most apply to you and or your organization. 
And so it looks like so far about – let's click here to the results. And you can feel free to keep clicking. About 50% say they know us a little. 32% know us uh, through registering but have not gotten donations. So that's good. So we can spend some time on actually how to get those donations today. Um, this is helpful to see – and about 15% say not at all. So total about 20% say you've just heard of us or you don't know us very well at all. So that's really helpful. And we'll spend some time answering your specific questions to help you get to know us better today. One more quick poll and then we'll launch into topics. So what would you most like to cover today? Uh, we can talk about the benefits of joining. And it is free to join TechSoup. You can talk about how to join and actually walk through that, that process of how to join as an individual. You can talk about how to register, how to get qualified, and what that means. Uh, maybe you need to associate your individual account with an existing organization that's already in our database. Like maybe you have a coworker who had previously requested donations and you need to know how to do it with your own account. I want to talk about eligibility, how to request products, admin fees, what those are all about. We can talk about some specific donation programs. And feel free, for those of you responding to specific donation programs, feel free to chat in to us which programs you'd most like to talk about or if there are products in particular you want us to cover because we can, when we're walking through some parts of our site, we can show some of those. So it looks like – just giving a few more seconds to give everyone an opportunity to participate. But feel free to keep clicking on those. And I think I made this poll so you can click on more than one. So Ken chats in that he's interested in learning more about QuickBooks 2014. Kara is interested in Microsoft 2010 and Server 2010. Mark is also inter interested in Microsoft Server. And we know you can't see all of the questions and comments coming into our chat. We can see those, and we'll share any useful comments that users share that would be useful for everybody, but there's not a way to open it up so you can see all of the chat coming in. Let's see. And we have somebody asking about a C3 here in the U.S., and they have a school in India, and they want to know if they can get some stuff for their school in India. We can talk a little bit about our global donation programs, Microsoft Office, things listed as not in stock. We can definitely cover that. A little bit about virus software, Adobe XP computers, and how to get new ones. Lots of great topics. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this poll. And so how to request products is the big one, and followed by eligibility and restrictions. I'm going to just write that down so I make sure that I'm keeping us on task. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop and take us to looking at our website. And it will take just a moment for that to load. And I might skip back to that poll at a later point so I can make sure I know what I want to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and share here. Sorry, it's taking just a second to get it to load up. And hopefully in just a moment you should be seeing the TechSoup.org homepage. And feel free to chat into us if for some reason you're not able to see that on your desktop. And let us know if I go too quickly on any of it. So if this is your first time coming to TechSoup.org, or perhaps you're already registered, you would need to join up here at the top right side where it says, Not a Member Yet, Join. And that joins you as an individual. So you should use a personal you email address. So it would be jane at greatorganization.org, <laughs> or jim at locallibrary.org. Um, so join using your personal email and then we associate you with an organization, or you have the opportunity to register with an organization anew. I'm going to go ahead and log in since we're going to focus first on getting actual donations. So this assumes that you may have registered already. So I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. And if you've already registered your organization, you will see up in the top right side, and I'm just waiting to make sure the screen is loaded. It should show you up at the top side that you are representing 
the name of your organization. So perhaps if you are a consultant for nonprofits, you might show you might have three or four different organizations that you request donations for. And so you'll want to make sure before you go looking for donated products that you're looking for them on behalf of the right organization. And so this is a test account obviously, Test Test Youth of Tomorrow. That is one of my fake nonprofits that I've created in our system. If you have yet to do that, you can go down under the Get Products and Services section. And I won't walk through the registration process right now, but if you go all the way down here, you can click to add a new organization, and it will walk you through the process of registering your new organization. And to do that you need to have your employer identification number, or EIN, which you can get from admin or operations staff in your organization, or you can even get it from your W-2. So I'm going to go ahead and assume we're in. We had some people ask about QuickBooks 2014, so I'll go ahead and walk us through how to get that product. So if I click on that same tab, the Get Products and Services tab, and I can either browse by donor or partner, by solution, by organization type, or a variety of other options. I'm going to go by donor or provider because I know that QuickBooks is made by a company called Intuit, and I can just look for them in alphabetical order on this big long list. So Intuit is right over here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on them. And this takes me to their donation program page and tells me a little bit about what kind of products they make available. I can click to view the eligibility and restrictions. When you register your organization or if your organization is already registered, in that process you would have selected an organization type and subtype. And those Types and subtypes are given to us by the IRS in their NTEE codes is what they call those. And so they are somewhat arbitrary sounding. Um, but basically your eligibility for the different donation programs is determined by which type and subtype you selected. And if there are any other or restrictions like organizations with a budget under a certain amount, or organizations um, what other kinds of restrictions might there be? So if you registered as an advocacy organization, that may restrict you if that donor partner says, we don't want to donate to advocacy organizations. Um, so this is where you can learn. If you think you should be eligible and you're not, you may be able to read the restrictions in this section, and that might bring some light to why your organization was not eligible. If you still think that you should be, then it's a good idea to contact our client services folks where people like Tommy will answer the phone and talk to you about it and figure out if, if maybe you're categorized in an incorrect type or subtype category. So I'm going to go ahead and browse Intuit products to see what they make available. And on this page you can browse – there's a little drop-down box here where you can see that there are some products listed directly below. But there's a drop-down box where you can look at financial management software or client education and support software. So Intuit has two different donation categories. And they may have different restrictions. They have different products. So if you're looking at companies that are pretty large like Intuit or Microsoft for example, there might be five or six different categories of products that you can be looking at. So make sure to look at that drop-down, especially if you don't immediately see the product you're interested in. So QuickBooks 2014 was what was mentioned. So we have these already showing up on the screen. And you can see that there is QuickBooks Premier Editions 2014 one user license, and it includes the nonprofit edition and a little blurb about it. And you can also see that there's QuickBooks Premier three user licenses, a little blurb about it and the admin fee info. There's also QuickBooks for Mac 2014. And then there's additional products like QuickBooks Point of Sale, which is a different product altogether. So we're going to assume that maybe you want the three user license. And I'm going to click to view the details on that. And this is where it will tell us, is this product available, or is it maybe out of stock which somebody else mentioned. Um, this is listed as available. So that means you can go ahead and request it as long as your organization is eligible. And don't worry if you don't know if you're eligible or not. Our system will. So if you add it to your cart and then going through the process to actually confirm and finalize that request, 
you would get flagged and it would tell you that you're not eligible. <laughs> so you, know, you don't have to know those details in and out, and that's what our system is really built for, is to be able to know what those restrictions are. Now, down here below it, I can see this basic info up here where it says it's available and what the admin fee is and that I'm requesting one. I could try and change that number to 3 or some other number or 500, but the, our system will also ensure that you're not requesting more than you're actually eligible to request. And so that's where it becomes important to look down here at the description and the system requirements and the rules and eligibility and restrictions tabs. because. For example, with this product, you are only eligible to request one of these per year, per organization. So you could try to request 500, but it won't work <laughs> is my point. So if you look down here, there is a lot of details. It tells you a bit about the product and its different features um, and what its capabilities are. Looking at the system requirements, it just sends you to the QuickBooks system requirements page on the Donor Partners site because it's got all of that detail there much better than we could necessarily do it. And then the rules and eligibility. It will say that it's donated to this type of organization, and it's one, ex one product per fiscal year and the dates that the fiscal year runs. So these are important things to pay attention to, if you're, especially if you're not able to request it for some reason and you think you should be. A lot of that may be explained in some of this language. It's not the most exciting reading, but it is really useful reading. Um, so it's a good idea to check it out. So I'm going to assume I'm good for this. I want to get this for my Youth of Tomorrow organization, so I'm going to add it to my cart. And now I see up here at my cart that it shows one item for $99. And that admin fee, which somebody else asked about admin fees, is the fee that TechSoup charges to help support all of our programs. So we're a nonprofit as well, so we're not looking to make money off of our, our nonprofit user base and libraries and foundations and charities. We are charging what is considered, a, I think it's 4 to 10% of what the retail value is of what these products retail for. So if you went into a Best Buy and tried to buy QuickBooks Premier Editions 2014 with three user licenses, it might be twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. I'm not sure with the three user license what the actual retail price is on it. But our admin fee is to help support that complicated system on our back end that helps determine eligibility so that our donor partners can be assured that the donations that they're granting are given to the organization types that they want to be supporting. And those are those are determined by our donor partners, not by TechSoup. So Adobe or QuickBooks or Intuit or Microsoft or Symantec or Cisco or any of the other donor partners in our catalog, they get to say, we want to donate to organizations that serve the homeless, domestic violence shelters, community-based organizations, leadership development. Uh, we don't want to donate to advocacy groups or political groups or the Boy Scouts. or They can list off any of that. And they can say, we only want to grant our donations of our products to organizations with a budget of less than $5 million or $50,000. And we at TechSoup are constantly pushing those boundaries to try and get them to expand the offerings of their programs to make them available to more charities, more libraries, more of all of you. And so we do our best to do that. But in order to gain that trust and have them expand those programs, we need to be able to assure them that the products that they are donating are delivered appropriately. So that's where that complicated system comes in, and that's where we have our admin fee to help support the ability for us to maintain that and add more programs and provide educational resources like webinars that we present regularly in articles and blog posts and all of that. So if this is the only product I want to purchase today or request as a donation today, I can go ahead and click on my cart. And this is where the steps for requesting are outlined. And so you can see that I'm able to view my cart. Step 2 is my restrictions check where it will tell me if I'm ineligible. I have to check that I agree to some terms, and then I check off what kind of shipping and delivery method. Most of our donated products in the catalog are delivered electronically. So they are either an electronic download or they may be a hosted service that's cloud-based or Internet-based. 
There are some products that are physically shipped products, and so that's where you would select. If you need it quickly, you can get it quickly. Um, and then review and insert payment information and then confirm. So I'm going to look down here and it shows QuickBooks. Yep, it's available. I'm requesting one. The admin fee is $99. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed to the restrictions check. And now it's said, okay, nothing in my cart. I don't see anything flagged. If, it, if I do have something flagged, I would see it down here. Um, and then it would tell me that I'm ineligible and I can't proceed beyond this. So I don't have a restrictions flag, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed to the next section. And this is where it's asking me to agree. And this is that this is a donation. It's to be used by my organization for its charitable purposes, and that these cannot be sold, traded, bartered, auctioned. These are considered uh, essentially an in-kind donation, and that we are just helping facilitate that process for the catalyst by via which you can access many of these donations. So you select that you agree to that. Some of our donor partners may also request that they can follow up with you to ask for a testimonial about their product um, because they are donating it. So they, they can put things like that. So just make sure that you are aware. And then this is where we would choose the shipping and delivery. And we would confirm our information like this is the organization email I entered when I registered. So any of my emails to say this product donation has been fulfilled, here is where you can download it, those would go to this email address, not necessarily my personal one. So make sure that you are using an address that is checked regularly when you register your organization if you haven't already. If you have already registered and you know that it is going to an email address that nobody looks at, then you may need to contact our client services to make sure that those, email, those, those emails and fulfillments get sent to an address that will be looked at regularly. We find that that is a problem that people frequently encounter when they say, I requested this thing three weeks ago and I haven't gotten anything. What's the deal? Um, it's often that those emails are going to an email box that is just not looked at. So I'm confirming my shipping address. now. If it's an electronically delivered item, we don't actually have a shipping method for that listed. So just keep it on the free ground shipping even though it won't be physically shipping as ground to you. And then you proceed with the donation request. And here is where you would enter that you are going to either process payment by credit card or that you will be sending a check. And so if you select check, TechSoup will email instructions to you. Add that org email address that you've listed, and um, at, to your member profile email address, sorry, just to clarify that. And so you'll get an email saying, here is how to submit the check, and once we receive it and process it, then you will receive the fulfillment email. So I'm not actually going to enter any credit card information down here, but this form should look familiar for anybody that, that purchases anything online. <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward form. And you can see up here at the top that it's all in an HTTPS setting with a little lock, which I know just in the last couple of days there was some, some scary news revealed that that lock doesn't always mean that things are secure. But we have done our best to build a system that is secure, and your payment information is not ever seen by anybody directly at TechSoup. It's processed, and it's housed in a, an e-commerce database <laughs> just for that transaction. So you can trust that it's not going to be uh, abused. And so once that payment information is entered, then you can proceed with the donation request and it will confirm. And then you will receive a follow-up email saying, we have received your donation request. Um, if you have registered your organization but you haven't been qualified yet, which means that our staff hasn't verified that you are in fact eligible, um, you can request, but you won't get that fulfillment email right away. It will send you an email that says, Thank you for your request. And you might not hear anything else until you have completed getting qualified. So Tommy, why don't I switch off to you for a minute, and maybe I can rule the, uh, the screen, and you can talk to us a little bit about qualification. 
Great. Yeah. So qualification is um, actually not a difficult process at all. Basically, once you register with TechSoup, you, I always recommend that you folks contact us. Because if you contact us, then we can check electronically with the IRS and see um, if we can uh, validate your 501c3 status. And then once we do that, we can usually qualify you right over the phone. Or you can also email your 501c3 as well to qualification at TechSoup.org. So um, the qualification process is actually pretty quick and pretty easy. So um, the main thing you want to do is join TechSoup. First you join as a member, and then of course the organization. So um, once you do that and you're registered, then you just go ahead and give us a call. And you can see as Becky on screen here as she's starting to do the registration process. It's actually quite easy. So as uh, Becky does that, you'll see that she's entering that she's a 501c3 nonprofit, and then she puts in her um, EIN number. Now, a lot of folks don't realize, especially if you're new, that you may be registered with us already. A lot of times organizations register and then they either drop the ball or they maybe somebody has moved on in their position and they never really gave them any of that uh, contact information to get into TechSoup. So our system will actually check your EIN and see if you are indeed registered. And if you are registered, then you can go ahead and that sort of cuts out 50% of the process right there. So then we just need to get you added onto the account. But um, you know, certainly either way we can, we can help you with that. And um, as you register, you're just going to put in your EIN number, and then you're going to do your organization type and subtype. And um, often this can be difficult for people because if you don't select the correct organization type, often the subtype does not come up. So this is a good reason to contact us by telephone so that we can sort of help you understand what type and subtype you should go under. Now, if for any reason you have selected a type and you feel it may be right or wrong, we actually are going to review it during your um, qualification process. And if we think that it's maybe incorrect or we can find a better one for you, because often people will select one organization type and they can actually fall under another which will expand their eligibility. So our goal is always to get you guys as much stuff as we possibly can. So we're going to get the best category type to fit your organization so that you can get the most of your donations. And then um, as, you, as you register with us, you know, it's pretty basic. You just do the contact info. You can see um, on the screen here we're just sort of filling out the org name, the address, zip code, email, and so forth. And then uh, once you're registered, you're, going to, you're actually going to go to another screen which uh, you'll, you'll see where it actually has a checklist of the qualification process of what you need uh, in order to get qualified. So it's going to tell you to go ahead and email or fax your 501c3. And you are welcome to do that. However, if you're eager to be qualified right away, maybe you want to request something, that is once again when I, I do recommend that you contact us by phone. Once you contact us by phone, we'll be able to help you complete that registration process and also take care of you know, any discrepancies on the account. Now, one thing I do want to state to folks, if I, if I can, Becky, is when you register yourself, you know, there are new rules and laws for fraud prevention that we now need to validate agents to make sure that you are a valid agent for that uh, organization. And the quickest and easiest way for us to do that is for you to register your work email with the organization's domain. So for instance, John Smith at redcross.org because that helps us validate that you are actually an agent for the um, organization. If you use a Gmail account or a Hotmail account, that's perfectly fine. You know, I find a lot, I work with libraries, and a lot of little libraries don't have websites or they don't have email domains. So they often use a Gmail account. 
And that is possible. You're welcome to do that. However, we are going to either need you to send us that 501c3 from that email so that we can verify your status as an agent, or you can do a letter on letterhead from one of the board members or directors that we can verify, and then you can send that letter in. So this is an additional step for qualification, and it's really a means of protection, protection for your organization to make sure that nobody is tapping into your account and um, that you guys are validated. So um, certainly I wanted to mention that extra step because it's, it's very, very important in the qualification process. Okay. Great. Thank you for that, Tommy. Okay. We also, um, I just wanted to walk through quickly visually while Tommy was speaking. I went ahead and registered a new test organization. Um, it's a pretty quick and painless process if you have your EIN number and you have you know, your address and an email address that you've picked out. And if you have an idea of what of those categories and subcategories you'd fit into, and I went to this section because we were talking a little bit about qualification. And I just wanted to point out that we, because this is like an in-kind grant process, it's not like Amazon where you register and then you request and it shows up on your porch the next morning, or where you get that email and you can download it right away. So if you're not yet qualified, expect that it can take a couple of weeks after you submit your documents. And your documents are what Tommy was referring to, that it's your IRS tax determination form. It's a proof that you are in the IMLS database if you're a library. And so there's this form that's a PDF that you can open up and download, and then you can email it in, or you can fax it, or you can snail mail it in to our office. And that's what we need to be able to see to validate that your organization is in fact eligible and qualified to receive the donations that you're requesting. So if you're just starting this process, or maybe you've registered but you haven't actually done the qualification part, that can prevent you from actually receiving any donations. Even if you've, so I've registered, and so now my test organization at the top shows Neighborhood Crime Prevention, which was my fake name I just created. And I could go ahead and request a donation on, on behalf of that organization right now. However, it won't fulfill it until that qualification process is completed. And so if you don't take that next step of actually sending in that form by email and scanning in a copy or emailing a copy of your IRS tax determination form, then we can't move forward either. So if you're stuck in that in-between place right now, that may be what's holding it up. If you've already passed through that and you know that you can request and you just haven't gone down that road yet, then that example that we showed earlier of QuickBooks 2014 shows it's a pretty easy process once you have selected what you want to request. Other things that we had that were top topics that people wanted to cover, let me go back really quickly and just look at that poll again, and I'll see if there are any questions that have popped up that we should answer. So Mary actually asked, what's your contact phone number? I've had problems associating my email with the organization which is a church. And we will include that in the follow-up email. But you can also find it um, if you look at the Support tab. Oops, let me go back and share my desktop again. And I can show you where to find that information. If you look at the Support tab on our screen, you can see Support Home which has information about all of the different types of support you can find through TechSoup's site including information on installation and licensing restrictions. You can find out about how to use your donations that you've received. Um, the product donation FAQ has a lot of these answers in it as well. But all the way down here at the bottom is the Contact Us. So this has information on how to get a hold of us by phone, through our Client Services Department, how to call our office directly without the toll-free number if you'd like to. Um, so this is really where you want to reach out to us. So if you're having problems with that email and associating yourself with that account, definitely reach out to our client services folks. And Tommy or one of the other folks on that team can help respond to those questions. I'm going to take just a second to show the product donation FAQ. And this is a really helpful document because it answers a lot of the questions you may have when you're going through any part of the process. So if you're trying to join, register, and qualify, all of these questions, if you click on any of them, 
For example, this one says, My organization has multiple or branch locations. What do I need to know? So if you are part of Boy Scouts of America or United Way or a library system that has 12 branches, and you want to know if each of your branches can get donations individually, this is where you can find some answers. Um, if you want to know how to access your account and manage how to become an authorized agent, which is just having that right to, rec to, to request donations on behalf of your organization, this has the answer for you. Um, if you are wondering about the eligibility and restrictions, this is where you can learn more about it. So definitely take a look through some of these. A lot of the answers are spelled out in this section. Again, it's under the Support tab, Product Donation FAQ. It's a really handy section to look through. I frequently come to it myself because rules change, and we add new donor partners, and some of them are cloud subscription services, and I don't know always what the subscription looks like. I come to this section pretty often. It's a great resource. So definitely take a second to uh, look that over if you are needing more help. I'm going to just bounce back to that survey quickly and see what other kinds of questions might be coming in. So we've talked about how to request products. Um, I mentioned some about the admin fees and the eligibility and restrictions. If you have more questions about those topics, feel free to chat them in to us. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other specific donation programs. So I'm going to bounce back to sharing my desktop again. And we'll go and look at Microsoft because that was the other bunch of products that people had mentioned, a bunch of different people had mentioned in the window. So again, I'm going to browse by donor or provider, and I'm going to go to Microsoft. Now Microsoft is the biggest donor of products through TechSoup. So they have quite a dizzying array of donations that are available. So like I mentioned before, coming to their donation program page is great, but it can be a little daunting if you are not sure how to find the different products or where to browse for them. So you click on this Browse button. And then here you can see some of the top products already listed here. So we know Office Professional Plus 2013 and Office 2013 Standard. These are two of the top products. And these are your suites, your Office suites, so your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and then the Professional Plus has a couple of other products in addition to some of the standard ones that you may use regularly at your organization. So if you need access to Publisher and you need access to Access um, or Link or any of those other ones, then that might be one that you'd want to you'd want to request the professional version of it instead of the standard version. You can also request the 2010 version, which I know a couple people asked about those. So this is the page when you land on it defaults to the desktop application software and office suites because these are among the most popular products that people come to TechSoup to get donated. So, but you can click on these and see that you can request a variety of PC operating system upgrades, the Get Genuine program which is full operating systems. And just to mention around Get Genuine, if you have computers that you are not sure of the licensing history, either they were donated to you and they have operating systems on them, but they are old and you would like to upgrade them, but you don't know who owns those licenses. Or say you have stuff that you think might be bootlegged. <laughs> um, the Get Genuine Operating System Program through Microsoft allows an organization to one time only ever, ever in the life of the organization, request full operating systems for however many machines you might have. So if you have three in the closet and you think you are going to need full operating systems on them, but you think you might get three more next year, then you want to request six of those <laughs> so that you have some in the wings because you will not ever be able to request Get Genuine upgrades or full operating systems again. And this is to help people get onto legitimate systems um, with licenses that you own. This is also useful if you have computers that are running Home Editions. Um, because our upgrade products aren't, you can't upgrade from a home edition to a professional edition. So if you bought, you know, your work computer it was purchased at Best Buy and it came installed already with um, Windows Vista Home, 
then Get Genuine would also work for upgrading that to a professional version, an office business grade version of uh, a Windows operating system. So you could get Windows 7 or 8 um, or 8.1. And so they have that program available. For folks who are asking about Server 2010, you'd look under Microsoft Server Software and Licenses, uh, Microsoft Macintosh Software, and we have a section that we've just assembled that's just software that's recommended for smaller organizations. So if you have a staff of fewer than 20 people, this might have things that we have found small organizations find the most useful from the Microsoft Donation Program. Because again, this Donation Program from Microsoft has everything from huge enterprise server licenses and client access, access licenses if you had a staff of 1,000. And so we want to make sure that it's not too difficult for smaller organizations to find the basics that they might need. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the server software and licenses. And it updates to this page and shows Windows Server, but it also shows in that dropdown all of these other kinds of server licenses. So again, a dizzying array of different products available that they donate generously to our users. So Windows Server was what it defaulted to, but you could look for multipoint server, which is a great option if you're for example, running a library or a public computing lab, and you want to set up 20 thin client computers, multipoint server would be a potential option for you if you're looking for dynamic CRM or Exchange. So they have all of these different sections to look at. Um, I'm going to just go with the Windows Server that had already popped up since that was asked about. And so you see Windows Server 2012 and the different editions available. I would recommend reading through these carefully in the details. So if you're not sure what edition you might need, you can read through the details and those might answer the questions for you. The user cal is the client access license. So for a server, you might have one server license that you're running off of the server, and your cal might be you might have 10 staff, and each of those 10 staff would need a cal. They would need a user license. So you know, it might be one of these and 10 of these that you are requesting. So make sure you are looking at those details. Um, if you are not sure, our community forums um, can help answer some of these questions. If you describe what your environment is and what you think you might need, if you scroll up here and click on the Community tab and go to our forums, once you've joined TechSoup as an individual, you don't have to actually have registered your organization at all yet, you can go to our forums you can ask questions, and we have a host of experts that are either nonprofit tech staff at nonprofits already, or they're nonprofit consultants on technology that can help answer questions like that. And so if you say, I've got 10 computers and I'm thinking about upgrading the server, um, what do you think I need? And they might say, You don't want any of these. You want Office 365. Let Microsoft host it. <laughs> So you know, they can give you advice. Um, we don't provide full-on tech support because we just don't have the capacity as a nonprofit ourselves to do that. But you can go there and get advice from tech experts and other nonprofits who are participating in our community and just asking questions. Another place that you can go to get resources and information is in our resources section. We have a whole host of articles and how-tos uh, we have a, a great blog that has really interesting content, and we run webinars like this. So you may find that there, are, there might be an article or how-to that describes setting up a server environment for your office. Um, you know, if you are not sure what product you need and you think, well, I think I want Windows 7, you can always type into our search box and search for whatever product it is. And it will take just a moment hopefully to open up. And so it defaults to the tab that shows the product donations. So you can see that there are these Windows 7 donations available. And you can also see for the person who is asking about upgrading their computers, we have a whole host of um, refurbished computers that are available that are business grade and come pre-installed with Windows 7 and a variety of different software on it. So it comes with Office 2010, Home and Business, Norton Antivirus. So you know, look through that if you are looking for computers because if you go to Best Buy again, or some retail outlet, they'll charge you for each of those additional things. <laughs> so it's definitely a good option for business-grade machines. Um, 
So it defaults to the Product Donations tab, but you can also look at the Articles and How-To's. And you can see like, oh, there's, this is helpful. There's a Steps and check, Checklist um, article about how to upgrade. There's a Decision article. Should I upgrade? I don't know. Let's read about it. Um, and then there's also things on other related products. Directions on if you're doing one of those installations where you have to um, do a Windows upgrade on your machines, and maybe you're using Get Genuine, how do you do that? So this clean Microsoft Windows installations is a great article for that. So definitely utilize some of those resources that are on our site to help you find the answers to some of those questions, particularly if you don't have hands-on tech support all the time or staff at your organization that can help you. Um, and also to mention that I mentioned earlier in the program that we have new consulting services as well. So I just want to point out that we have some new donor partners and that are tech consultants that are giving either discounted rates or donating outright, and so it would just be the cost of the admin fee for some of their consulting services as well because they either are nonprofits or serve the nonprofit tech community and they want to they want to donate their services. So, uh, for example, one is so I'm sorry, one that I'll mention today. Sorry, I keep scrolling off of that. Is um, called Tech Impact, and I'll just go to their page really quickly. And their staff offers, you know, help if you're looking at migrating to Office 365. They offer phone assessments to help you make decisions. They offer managed IT assessments to determine if, if you don't have IT staff um, at your organization. They can help you decide would it make sense for you to have your IT managed externally. Here are some things we can help you determine. And that doesn't mean necessarily with them, but they can help you determine whether it makes sense. And then they also have you know, one hour tech support over the phone, which if you've contracted with tech companies before for consulting services. When I lived in Washington D.C. seven years ago doing this, the going rate was around $100 an hour for basic tech support or a tech guy to come into the office to fix your email. And so they're offering it for $49, which is you know, I think a pretty terrific rate. Um, but again, that's just one of the options that has now newly been offered into our catalog with consulting services. And we're trying to expand that as well where there will be more consulting options for you, particularly for organizations that don't have um, on-staff IT to help them make these decisions and set things up. I'm going to go ahead and bounce back and see what other kinds of questions we might have. And feel free to keep posting questions in the chat window um, of any areas that you want us to cover or any products you want us to look at. Um, Lynette had asked about QuickBooks 2014, and I know that it was answered in the chat window, but it's a worthwhile question for everybody to hear about whether there's a version that's hosted in the cloud that's available. The versions that we offer through the TechSoup catalog right now are both installed software. Um, many of our partners are moving more toward cloud offerings or hosted Internet offerings. And so you can definitely find more of that coming into our catalog. So keep checking back. For those of you who asked about uh, when things are not in stock um, and that there's no indication necessarily when they will be available, um, because these are donations from our partners, we don't often have a whole lot of information about when they'll become available either. So you know, for example, Symantec might say, we want to donate Norton Antivirus and Norton Internet Security, and we will donate 20,000 units for the year, for the fiscal year. And once we're out, we're out. So it's really up to the donor partners. So keep that in mind. If you see something that's out of stock, the best way to know when something has become available again, or if a new offer is available, like if QuickBooks decided to offer their cloud version through our, our program, is to sign up for either the New Product Alert newsletter or the Buy the Cup newsletter. And so those New Product Alert goes out once every other week, so it's twice a month. We don't harass people very often. 
And that's primarily going to focus on what those new additions to the catalog, or if something is back in stock uh, on our site. So those are – that's the new product alert. Buy the Cup is a weekly newsletter that's sent out every Tuesday. And that is not as product focused, though we do always mention when there's a new bigger product that launches. Um, but that one is more about kind of helping organizations make uh, find solutions to common problems. So it might have a section on how to select a good CRM or constituent relationship management tool. Or it might have a, a section on how to write grants. And in that we would highlight some articles and also point to any products that might be relevant. So those are two, two decent newsletters to sign up for that would help you keep in touch with whether those become available. We also have um, a couple of questions about the donation program, the Global Donation Program from Jamie. So she's asking about if you, are, if you have a partner in a different organization. So I'm going to go ahead really quickly and reshare my desktop. Um, let's see. So if you are up on the TechSoup homepage, you can click on your country at the very top in that drop-down. And these are currently the countries that are part of our donation programs worldwide. And this is constantly expanding. And we have certain products and donations available in certain countries and others not. So the United States has by far the most donor partners because that happens to be where we're based. Um, and so you might be able to get a donation of QuickBooks here in the U.S but not in Hong Kong. So I would recommend if you click on any of these pages, it takes you to that website on the TechSoup Global site. So I'll go ahead and do that with one example. So TechSoup New Zealand opens up. And so now I'm seeing their website where you can find out about their tech donations that are available locally. And so for example with New Zealand, they might have some of the same products that are available with TechSoup.org which is the U.S. based program. But they may have all kinds of other programs that are available that are local to New Zealand. And so this is really ideal if you are based in that country. If your organization is based in the U.S. and you have programs in another country, then you may want to see if you can get that program in the other country to register themselves with the local entity. Even if it's part of your same organization, you'd want to reach out to the local partner to see if they can get donations locally. I'm going to have to bounce back out here so I can see the other questions coming in. Um, let's see. Beth asks, last time I tried to obtain a donation, I saw products that were discount as opposed to donate. Is this still an option? So that's a great question. Um, most of the products in the TechSoup catalog are considered full donations by the, donation, by the partners. Um, there are some though that don't fully donate that only discount the products. And so you will see that distinction. There isn't a discount versus donate option available for most partners. It's only if say you don't qualify for the full donation, like if your organization doesn't meet the budget restrictions for the free option, then they might offer a discount for any organization. For example, Citrix, our partner that offers um, web conferencing and audio conferencing like what we're using today on ReadyTalk. They have a donation program if you qualify for it based on those budget requirements. And they have a discount that they make available if you don't. So even if you don't qualify for the full thing, there may be an option that's available for you. Let's see. Um, Mary Ann asks, how do we check if we're qualified yet? Tommy, do you know the answer to that one? Can people see on the website or do they yeah. have to call in? No, that you actually can see it on the website. I actually just answered her question in the chat. Um, basically you just sign in, and when you sign in it tells you your status usually on the top right, whether you're pending qualification or qualification. And you also can just contact us. You know, we'll be happy to let you know uh, whether you're qualified and what we need in order to get you qualified. You know, because that happens a lot where folks um, end up going through the registration process and, and sometimes they maybe um, got sidetracked or had to do something else. And then when they come back to it, they're not really sure what they need to get qualified. So if you contact us at Client Services, you know, we'll be more than happy to sort of guide you through and tell you what documents we may need or if we need an agent verification letter or if, um, 
you know, you've registered correctly. But certainly you can sign in. It's, on, it's usually on the top right when you log in. It tells you your status. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. Jeannie asks a similar question. How can you tell how many licenses you've used to date? Well, it depends on the donation program. Now if you're talking Microsoft, Microsoft has a great feature. If you actually sign into your account, and then you just go to the top right under Manage Account, and then what you would do is once you're in Manage Account, you would go to where it says Donation Request History Status, and, and you'll see Becky doing that here on the screen. And then when you do that, if you notice near the bottom of the screen is the Microsoft Donation Center on the right. If you click on the Microsoft Donation Center, this is a great feature that we have where it tells you, um, because Microsoft is our biggest donor, and they are so generous with you folks. And they actually offer you up to 50 licenses in 10 different title groups plus 5 server products over a 2-year cycle. And sometimes when you have that many donations, it's hard to keep track of them. So this donation center will do that for you. Normally it, it will tell you on the top right how much money they've saved you as far as how many donations you've received and the worth of those donations. And then as you scroll down, um, since we're on a test account, we're not going to have any of these donations because we certainly haven't placed any because we're a test account. But on the bottom of the screen you'll see um, where they would list your products. They would tell you the products, the quantity. In fact, one of the great things about Microsoft's program is, for instance, say you have Microsoft Office and you've requested 10 licenses it will actually show you 10 slash 50. So it will show you 10 of 50. That is a really good feature too. Okay? Great. Thank you for that, Tommy. So I'm going to go ahead and jump us back out because we are almost at the top of the hour. And I see we have just a couple of more questions, and we can try and answer those in chat quickly while I wrap us up. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. If you have questions that we didn't get to, please feel free to join us in our community forums at TechSoup.org slash community where you can continue to ask your questions. And our great host of forum experts will help answer them, including people like Tommy who help answer questions in our forums regularly. I also want to just take a quick poll to ask if we got your questions answered today. And we'll have also a post-event survey. So if you want to go ahead and click on this, if there are some questions you still have, Again, I would recommend taking them to our community forums where we can help make sure that they are answered. Or contact our client services team who can help you answer any specific account related questions. I am going to go ahead and just show really quickly a screen of some resources, many that we discussed today. So we want to make sure that you know where to go to find more, how to join and sign up for these newsletters, how to get to that product donation FAQ, and the articles. We want to make sure that you can get the answers you need to use the donation program most effectively for your organization's needs. So again, join us in the TechSoup forums to ask more. Thank you so much Tommy for sharing your expertise today. And you can also find him on our client services, uh, phone lines, answering calls, and helping you day in and day out. Thank you also to Ali on the back end who helped answer questions throughout the webinar. And lastly, thank you to our webinar sponsor ReadyTalk who provides the use of this webinar platform for us on a regular basis so we can provide webinars each week. You can also join us for future webinars. We have some coming up that we'll include links to in the follow-up email that may be of interest. So thank you so much. Please take a moment to complete the post-event survey so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you, thank you everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.